Hey everybody, I want to share a quick video today on how to do some page formatting in Dorico 5. One of the most important elements in music uh, notation is page formatting, making it look good to the players. When I was using Finale for the last 28 years or so, I got pretty used to how I could adjust the pages to make it look really good and how to make it print the way I wanted. And when I started into Dorico, it was pretty frustrating because they have a completely different system. So I want to share some of the things I've learned recently and how I've been able to utilize some of the powerful tools in Dorico to make my music look good and do it kind of efficiently and quickly without having to kind of chase around and do a lot of manual editing. There's three basic things we're going to be talking about in here. One of them is the spacing between lines. So when you have line one, line two, line three and apart. Also the size of the note heads, as well as the automatic collision, uh, vertical collision adjustment that Dorico has. Those three tools are really powerful, but I found that I really had to alter the default settings to make my music look the way I wanted. Because I think Dorico defaults to, like for example, a part that has no chord symbols and other things that really make it much more difficult to page format. So let's dive into the software and see how it looks. Okay, here we are in Dorico 5 in the engrave mode where we're going to be adjusting some of the page formatting settings here on this piece of music. So you can see here in the full score, one of the first adjustments we might want to think about is the size of the note heads. Oftentimes in scores to take fewer pages, will make the note heads very, very small, which can be, frankly, just kind of hard to read. And in Dorico, it's not always obvious what it is that you need to change to make those note heads bigger. So in Dorico, what they actually list that as is as the spacing of the stave, and then it'll inflate the notes to fit that. So this option is found under the Layout tab in, in Dorico. So that's under Library, and you can see it here under Layout Options or Shift-Command-L. So here we go. And there it is right there under Page Setup, you have Space Size. And this is the size of the space in the staves, and the bigger this number is, the bigger the note heads are gonna be. And you can see they have some sizing guides here from zero all the way to eight. And when we go into Dorico and we're wanting to make an adjustment, we can choose one of these presets. But then once we choose the preset, we can also choose one of these uh, subsettings here and we can fine tune that size. If you make this number larger, that's gonna make the note heads bigger. And if you go down, it makes them a little smaller. So if we were to choose, for example, size three and hit apply, we can now see the note heads got a fair amount bigger, but the problem is, is it pushed one of my systems onto the second page. So I might choose to reduce the note heads slightly so I can get that system back on the page. So if I go back into the options, maybe I lower that back down to about 0.58 and then I hit apply. And there we have both systems on the first page. And it gives me a nice size for the music so that I can read it easily and I get good page formatting. So that's the first option we wanted to discuss here in Dorico, is that note head size. And this comes in handy in the score, but also in the parts. So if we go into a part here, we can see that we have a pretty decent size to our note heads, and we can decide though, do we need it to be a little larger? Is this a little tough to read? I find in that layout for parts, that I don't want to go any lower than this size 5. Size 5 is okay, size 4 is kind of ideal though, and you can see the size difference there. It's pretty substantial, and if you can get away with it page formatting wise, it's quite a bit easier to read this way. And so that would be one of my suggestions when you're going into your page formatting, is how big can you make that font without making it take up too many pages or be too crowded on the uh, page um, where it's just hard to read for those reasons. Now the next option, and this one frankly speaking, when I first got into Dorico drove me crazy, which is the line spacing. I remember in Finale, you could set a gap between each system, which was a really kind of efficient way to quickly uh, make your music look the way you wanted it, but it doesn't really work that way in Dorico. You can hand drag by going over here to this symbol, and you can hand drag one of these, but it basically is gonna affect that one system and you can't grab multiple systems and make them all the same. So it's not a real great way of doing it. 
But again, if we go back into the layout menu, we can go down here to vertical spacing and we can find this one right here, which is inner system gap. And this is the one that controls how much space there is between the lines. Now, one of the interesting things is in Dorico, it defaults to size six. And size six is pretty tight. And you can see here, I have collisions already. I have things that are going over the top of each other, and I have uh, lines that are just kind of crowded and hard to read. And so this is really not very ideal. So what I found, the first thing that was really important is to adjust this size. And believe it or not, if the default is size six, I typically find somewhere between eight and 10 to be just about the right number. The nice thing is you can also take this number and if we highlight a number of the staves on the side here, I can change that system setting and it'll apply to all of those parts. And if you have one part that needs slightly bigger spacing or slightly smaller, you can actually custom adjust it, which is really kind of a nice feature. And you can kind of do this from one menu, which is a pretty slick way of doing it, frankly speaking. And now you can see that I changed it back to 10 Everything spaces out pretty darn well, and it looks much nicer. It's a lot easier to read. Another setting that was really causing me troubles was this auto uh, collision and auto justification feature that has to do with the spacing. So if I go down here to this auto justification and I change this number here, you can see what it's going to do is it's going to change at what threshold it's going to uh, push the systems out away from each other and literally fill the page. Now in this case, I might choose to take that setting and turn it up to a real high number like 90% because I would actually like it to be a much more uniform spacing so all the lines are the same distance apart. That kind of helps with your eye so everything is pretty darn uniform. But in some settings, when you really are trying to save page space, for example, if I change this number back up, you can see what happens is things get a little crowded and a little weird. Or if this is set to a pretty low number, all of a sudden, now you have these giant gaps between the lines, which also looks pretty ugly. So what I find is I need to find a happy medium between the actual distance between the staves and this auto justification feature. And so what I do in this auto justification feature is I typically keep it relatively high, say 80 plus percent, because I always figure at around 60%, which is Dorico's default, that's gonna leave a pretty big chunk between each line, which kind of looks weird. But if I have my spacing big enough, that typically will mean I'll be able to get not only a good visual look on my page, but I'll also be able to get a kind of a nicer flow. So let me change that back real quick. So you can see here on this part, I might choose to have just the spacing set because the second page looks pretty nice and there's a little bit of white space on the bottom, which is never really a problem because everything is pretty darn uniform. But I might also choose to up the font size again, and that would be size four. And because I had left myself some space, it gave me some room for the part to spread out. But you can see in this case, I actually pushed onto a third page. So I might wanna make those note heads just a little bit smaller so that I don't end up on that third page. And there we go. So now we have nice, good, clean spacing, nice big note heads so it's easy to read, especially in the dark, but also we have good spacing and we're using all of Dorico's automatic settings. And so I really, really like to go into each part and I'm going to change those three settings. I'm going to change the note size to make sure that the flow looks good and it's as big as it can be without getting onto like a, a third or a fourth extra page. I change the vertical spacing and I mostly am going to edit this one here, the inner system gap, which is how far in between each line 
and then I'm going to change the auto justification so that I don't end up with lots of really big space. This actually happens to me a lot on a score where I'll have two systems per page because it'll push the ones far apart and then you have this big ugly gap in the middle which is not very attractive. So sometimes I have to change that to a really high number like 99 or 100% to avoid uh, Dorico doing that setting. It doesn't really look all that great when you have them pushed far apart. And so sometimes the default in Dorico can really make your music look, frankly, kind of weird. So those are the big three. And again, if you're a Finale user like I was, this is the same as that distance between staves. And this is the same as that setting that was in Dorico or, it, or in Finale where it said space systems evenly. And so those are the kind of the most important. You can also mess around with this minimum gaps thing, which is going to dictate how much the auto spacer is going to give on uh, when it does it. But I find those settings not to work terribly well. I typically find I really have to do some of these manual settings to really make the parts pop. One last look here, if I go down to the bass part, you can see because there's so many chord symbols and measure markers and stuff, this is where you really have to work at getting your spacing correct. You can also start messing around with, if you highlight a note, you can also do things like put in a system break, which will you can see actually affected my vertical spacing because now I no longer had a conflict between this rehearsal number and that tempo marking. So. I hope you found this video useful. Please ask questions in the comment. I love to help people out if I can. And if you've got the time, check out my new album, Might. You'll find it on my YouTube channel or anywhere where you stream music. I'm also letting people know that I have all my music up on my Bandcamp site. And Bandcamp is a great way to support artists because we get a higher percentage of the sale of the music, which is just another way of supporting artists and creators like myself if you're interested in having us produce more content. So I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.